ओके ओके गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स वी आर बैक अगेन विथ मथुरा मेडिका प्यूरा क्लास एंड आई एम हियर डॉक्टर संजय सोलंके फ्रॉम सेंट्रल महाराष्ट्र एंड फ्रॉम टूडे वी हैव आवर फ्रेंड कलीग एंड को फाउंडर ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टिकवा she is from uh, northern israel right yeah i can't pronounce your that town name tikva sesor no no town town oh malot malot ha uh, yeah okay you know how to say that you've said it lots of times okay so today we are here with uh, belladonna study from matra medica pura and uh, we will try to learn uh, all those symptoms proving data try to understand each word new words and let's see what hanuman says in uh, matra medica pura of belladonna Yeah, I mean, even the introduction is so lovely. I, you know, the introduction to each and every medicine is so valuable. It gives us valuable indications for when things go wrong and which things to use in case things go wrong, and it tells us history and tons of different tidbits of information. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. and uh, i will just start screen share so we can go through the data is that oh available? i forgot to send you the picture i wanted to use the picture first okay okay Now, i will here? i will i will just uh, close screen share yeah, so you can uh, you can share your side the mm, picture I can't because see i didn't sign into whatsapp web and that'll take me like 5 minutes are you signed into whatsapp yeah okay pull it up it's right it's there it's up yeah it's there in the uh learning group nice picture of belladonna okay what happened whatsapp hang it's connecting again okay by the time you can talk a little bit it beats of belladonna belladonna is uh, related to a lot of different remedies that we use on a regular basis um like stramonium mm -hmm. wythia um potatoes <laughs> really they're the same family botanically not that the botanical designation is of importance particularly you know it's a very in intense fad these days to talk about the family and the kingdom and where things are on the periodic table where is where is uh, i can't find it's just like i i posted it earlier today Okay, look at Belladonna. Got it. It's got these little black berries. Um, historically, women have eaten those berries to give themselves lovely bright eyes. The Greeks did this uh, way back, like you know, two thousand years ago. and women would eat this poisonous substance and you know it's used to dilate the pupils during an eye exam atropine yep so those you see it yep <laughs> the pretty pretty purple flowers 
and the little berries that come after the flowers, the little fruits. Looks a little bit like a tomato, right? There's a reason for that. They're kind of a related species. So anyway, that is the picture of a belladonna plant. And now we can go to the proving data. One minute. Thank you very much. One minute. I need to switch the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the medicine that we use as belladonna, as homeopaths, is the freshly pressed juice of the whole plant at the commencement of its flowering mixed with equal parts of alcohol. That means you go and you get a piece of the plant just like we saw it with the flowers. When it begins to flower and you mix it with an equal part of alcohol and you press it. And so it goes to say here, the plant gathered in the garden. Uh, one minute. Okay. Uh, do you remember we had a uh talk about the fine pharmacy lecture belladonna is one remedy uh, in which we can find the medicine preparation of one category of uh, uh, making medicine the honeyman made do you remember You have that piece of paper? Yeah, I'm looking. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. Category one. Category one, you can see one as to one. Yep, you each just parts. Ah, one as to one. Mm -hmm. Equal parts. Ah, what is category one? Can anyone anyone remember? Yes, sir. Class one old method. Yeah, class one old method. Uh, what the uh, from what part of the plant he explains the preparation of drug? Uh, whole plant. Yeah, whole plant. But uh, whether it is juicy, less juicy, more juicy. It's a more juicy plant. Right. Class one this, is belong to the more juicy plant. Yeah, class one belongs to more juicy plant. And here in Belladonna, we can find how to prepare medicine from more juicy plants in description of Belladonna. This is a very important to learn People ask from where we should find how to make the medicine. Anyone already mentioned? He given he has given the categories uh, categories of classes, and accordingly he explains class one in Belladonna, class two in Thuja, class three in Squela, and class four Spigelia. Right. Okay, continue, Tikwa. Yep, so if I were to go out in my yard, I will probably, if I look carefully, I will probably find this plant, which makes me think that I have not yet seen a stramonium this year, which is unusual. Okay, so the plant gathered in the garden or on a rather dry soil and preferably 
on the slope of a hill. So he's saying that it's uh, good to get it from the slope of a hill. If it is a little at all inferior in medicinal power to the wild plant, although some physicians have asserted the contrary. So they're just having a little discussion there about whether or not the plant you find in your garden is better than wild crafted way out in nature because it's kind of a car common garden plant that just shows up. From the following completed list of the symptoms of belladonna, it will readily be seen that it corresponds in similarity to a number of morbid states not unfrequently met with in life and that hence it must frequently be homeopathically applicable for curative purposes like a polycrest. And yeah, we use belladonna for a lot of different reasons and a lot of different situations. And it is a very important remedy in our pharmacopoeia. And what else can we say other than that? Because it does correspond in similarity to a number of morbid states. Morbid states are when the body's expressing signs and symptoms frequently met in life and frequently applicable. So remember it says similarity. It does not say same. We're not doing isopathy. We're doing homeopathy. So whenever the proving symptoms match the symptom of the person that needs treatment, and if those two things correspond, the symptoms produced by the vital force and the symptoms that show up in the proving, belladonna will work. It's just like homeopathy is A plus B equals C. It's just one plus one is two. And so he says that we see it so often, it's a polycrest. Oftentimes in modern days, people think of polycrest as being, you know, those big remedies like the antisporics, you know, or they think about constitutional, but polycrest means something that has many uses. A crest is something that stands apart or stands up in a situation, a crest, like the crest of a wave. So if you are looking at the sea, and you've got waves, the waves come and they're crests. So poly means many, and crest is many points or high places. So yeah, we use belladonna for pain of various types. We use belladonna for menstrual problems. We use belladonna for heavy bleeding. We use it for lots and lots of things. And we continue with Hanuman. Those small-souled persons who cry out against its poisonous character must let a number of patients die for want of belladonna and their hackneyed praise that we have well-tried mild remedies for these diseases only serves to prove their ignorance for no medicine can be a substitute for another. There, so here we have Hahnemann's rant. Hahnemann always gives us a small rant, you know, where he's like complaining about the situation. So he's saying small soul, people who have very small souls, who will rather let people die instead of giving them belladonna because we have other things to try. And he says that that shows how ignorant they are because once again, no medicine can be a substitute for another. Because remember, we're looking at the presentation of the vital force and comparing it against the presentation of proving data. So one will not substitute for the other. Continuing with Hahnemann, to take an example, how often are the worst forms of sore throat, especially those combined with external swelling, given over to death, in spite of all the employment of venesections, leeches, blisters, 
gargles, emollient poultices, cooling powders, sudorifics, and purgatives. And yet, without all these tortures, they might have been cured in a few hours with a single minute dose of belladonna. Okay, so he's saying how many times have people died because they've had their blood taken from them with bleedings, they've been had leeches put on their skin to drink their blood. And these things called blisters is putting a, a corrosive substance on the skin in order to try to divert the attention away from the disease to make another disease. Gargles, we all know about gargling. You know, that's when you take a cup and you put like salt, right? Or something like that, warm water, and you put it in your mouth, you go, gah, right? Everybody does that when they're sick. Emollient poultices, those would be external applications of the throat. So let's say they're gonna put something like mustard powder and some oil and put that on a, a cloth. And then cooling powders would be things that would, they think bring down inflammation. And then sudorifics also like an anti-inflammatory. And then we have again, the purgatives. Yes, of course, we should make people vomit and have diarrhea because they have a sore throat. Right guys? Mm -hmm. That's the way medicine is. Nowadays, it's like, oh, let's give you some Acamol or some acetaminophen and some antibiotics. You might have a virus, but we're going to give you these things anyway. And then the body has to work to overcome the problem of the antipyretic, you know, the uh, painkiller, the Acamol, the paracetamol, the ibuprofen. And, you know, because that's going to bring down the inflammation and the pain, but then the body has to send out more calls for inflammation and send more warnings of pain. Because what is pain? Pain is only a warning. It's a sign. It's a symptom that the body needs something. It's a call for assistance. If we didn't get pain when we got hurt or we're in a dangerous situation or when we're sick, we might not know what to do about it. It's just, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, even though it's really awful while we're experiencing it, but it, you know, it gives us a warning. And so it's saying you've tried all these things and without all these tortures, see, he uses the word torture because these things like cutting people's skin. Hi, Devira. Hello. So cutting skin. I'm on the bus, so I'm just gonna stay quiet. Okay. Um, so when people have their, their vein, you know, severed so that they draw off a pint of blood in order to try to help somebody with their sore throat, that is definitely torture compared to a pellet of belladonna in water. Right guys, let's be real here. Okay, so continuing with Hahnemann, and what other real medicine would not be hurtful, dangerous, and poisonous in the hands of the ignorant? Certainly every powerful medicine would be so if given in unsuitable cases of disease and in disproportionately large doses, for which the so-called physician would be solely to blame. So yes, belladonna is poisonous, but when we use it properly, it's not hurtful or dangerous. It's very, very helpful. Like I said, we use belladonna regularly. It's a very commonly used medicine. And the physician is to blame if we use the medicine wrong. And that's why we spend so much time learning how to use medicine properly. Isn't that right, guys? Even in allopathy, they use uh, this drug. 
often we heard the name atropine. Mm -hmm. Atropine is a derivative of belladonna. Yep. That's why. Have I... you heard that name atropine? They use for pains. Nerve stimulations. And uh, use by uh, uh, eye specialist for people mm -hmm. dilation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is the main action it has on body. In the material form. Now, when we're going to the immaterial energetic form we're going to see a lot of very very important uses for this drug yeah then he continues on the other hand the most potent and energetic medicines will become the mildest by diminishing the dose sufficiently and they will become the most curative, even for the most delicate and sensitive bodies when they are given in appropriate smallest possible doses. And when the case of disease consists of affections very similar to what the medicine itself has been shown, it can call forth in a healthy human being. With such potent drugs as belladonna, we must never neglect to exercise the requisite care in the homeopathic selection. But this would never enter the head of the routine practitioner who, as it well known, is in the habit of treating all cases with a few prescriptions learned by rote. Oh, that means they're not checking to make sure they have something that's going to match the proving data. So yeah, there are valuable indications and you know, belladonna is the type of medicine that we can give you know, just by simple questioning when we get to know our medicines well, because a lot of the medicines that require belladonna are acute and kind of as you gain experience as a practitioner, you can just kind of say to yourself, hmm, this looks like a belladonna situation. But anyway, he's what he's talking about is that we shouldn't just give things because we have an idea. You know, we have to think it through. We have to know what we're doing. We need to be familiar with its indications. We need to be familiar with the proving data, et cetera. And taught, continuing with Hahnemann, taught by a hundredfold experience of the sick bed during the last eight or 10 years, I could not help descending to the resilient fold dilution. <clears throat> and I find that the smallest portion of a drop of this for a dose quite sufficient to fulfill mm -hmm. every curative intention attainable with this medicine. Okay, then we go into making the uh, making the drug. So wait for a second. Okay, so he's talking about the decillion. Uh, when we were talking in the group on Friday, we were talking about X, uh, uppercase X, with the um, like degree, uh, what do you call it, notification after it. It looks like yeah. this. And that is... Oh gosh, I don't have a clean piece of paper here. Hang on just a second. I want to show what this is because it's the cilium. And we were supposed to continue with that. You remember, Sanjay, you were going to take a picture of the decillium. So this here is the And we can work that out mathematically to know what that is, but we're going to talk about it. So he gives 
a small portion of the drop of this of this preparation. That means that he's got his mother uh, medicating potency and medicating potency should not be used. So medicating potency needs put onto to lessen the quantity. Very important. Medicating potency should never be used on its own and it always needs to be Hello, Samir. Did everybody? So medicating potency yes, cannot be used on its own. It needs to be spread onto a quantity of sacrac, <clears throat> dried, put in a vial, and then you take one or two of those poppy seed sized pellets, not the bigger pellets, the little, little ones. And then you put that in water. Then you are ready to dose your patient with an appropriate quantity of medicine. Because we never want to give too much medicine. This is very, very, very important. Okay. So we go to the, to the directions. Two drops of the juice mixed with equal parts of alcohol, taken as unity, as with other vegetable juices, and shaken with 99 to 100 drops of alcohol by two downward strokes of the arm, whose hand holds the mixing pile, gives a hundredfold potentized dilution. One drop of this shaken in the same way with another 100 drops of fresh alcohol gives 10,000 fold dilution. And one drop of this shaken with 100 drops of alcohol, the million fold. And thus, in 30 such vials, the potentized dilution is brought to the decillion fold with which the homeopathic physician affects the cures he can expect to make with belladonna. Okay, guys. So we're gonna do that one to 99 or one to 100, 30 times. Well, that's gonna give us what potency? Decilion. If this is the decillion, what potency is that going to be if we've done one to 99 30 times? 30. 30 what? 30 C. 30 C. Yeah. So never get confused when Hahnemann uses this, this, uh, uh, what would you call it? Demarcation, that's too big a word. Symbol. When Hahnemann uses this symbol, we're seeing here in this, in this yeah. piece of Belladonna that he's talking about basically a 30 C. This is centesimal. Cent means 100. So it's one to 100, one to 99. This is not X. This is not a decimal potency. Hahnemann did not invent a decimal potency. Herring did. Constantine Herring made the decimal potencies, which were much maligned by Boninghausen. He did not approve at all. While Boninghausen was going higher and higher and higher in potency, as a true follower of Hahnemann, Herring was going lower and lower in potency, down to mother tincture and decimal potency, one to nine. And that's very important. So whenever we see this, and we see it often, this symbol, it basically 
we could just take that as a 30C, but then there's another little bit of information that Boninghausen gives us, which is off topic, but we could share that another time. Okay, so we are not looking at an X potency. We're not looking at a decimal potency. We are looking at a centesimal potency because this was before uh, LM potencies were developed. Okay, so the above, this making it 99 to with the alcohol, the downward strokes of the arm and the file, right? And this is shaken. And then we put that on sack lac. Then we take one of the dry pellets, we put it in water, we dose our patient. That is enough to facilitate change in the vital force to cure somebody. You might need to do it two or three times in an acute, but we don't need stronger medicine than this. So it says here. Uh. Dr. Sandhya? Sir? Uh, can you explain this paragraph? It's from pharmacy. Which one paragraph, sir? Is the two drops two of the drops juice of... mixed with the... Ah. Yeah. Two drops of the juice mixed with the equal part of alcohol means uh, first we have to make a mother tincture. According to classes, so here is Dr. Hanneman told in the aphorism number 267. So there is a two drops of the Belladonna juice and up mix in the equal part of the two part of the strong alcohol. Then second with the 90 or 100 drops of the alcohol means uh, mix after mixing, you have to add the 99 or 100 drops of the alcohol. But in the pharmacy book, there is a not written like a dead. In the pharmacy book, uh, class one, they have written, ki take out the one drop of the class one, then add the, again, uh, either here is a drug power is a one by two, then potentization, you have to take the two, two part of the, two drops of uh, mother tincture of the ballet donor, 98 parts of the alcohol, then give the 10 succussion, then it is a 1C potency according to pharmacy. Yeah, but, but according to all... Way, this is the way Hanuman taught. Yeah. Yeah. And even in the methods, we say that uh, in class uh, 1, Hanuman given the direction how to make medicine in class, from class 1 in the Belladonna. So... This is the way we need to tell, explain or teach whatever remedies fall in class one should be made in the ways he has explained in the Belladonna. Yeah, most of them is the juicy plant or material. Belladonna is the mm. material medica is the under name. Then you have to more juicy plant all the Belladonna. We have to follow the Belladonna rules. Exactly. And this, these are the rules he has mentioned in Materia yeah. Medica Pura. This is a very important part. And then, then continue, please. Shall I? Ah. Okay, sir. Then uh, after that, we have to the like a 1C potency uh, prepared. After 1C, then we have to take the according to Take a one part of the one C and mix the 99 part of the uh, alcohol, then give the 10 seconds and it is a 2C. Same, uh, repeat the preceding post and is the 2C, one part and 99 part of the uh, alcohol, then turn it down to 3C till 30C because the last limit is the uh, Dr. Hanneman is the 30C. Then, after if you want to the 31C, then you have to same. Then the one part of the 30C and the 99 part of the sugar, uh, sorry, uh, alcohol, then give the 10 down stroke is a th 31. Okay. So, uh, anyone told that one drop, one drop of uh, previous potency should be mixed with 
new drops of uh, alcohol, 100 drops. And he has given that scale 10,000 folds, million folds, and decillion folds. The, this term is also important to understand the value. Means how many times we have, this is a technical or a mathematical uh, way. I think Tikwa uh, yeah. uh, uh, that we had uh, one class on this part. Do you remember? Tikwa? Hello? Tikwa? Is he here? Your Video mic. is on, but Mike, Mike, Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. No, we have more than one class on this matter. Uh, that uh, she has took. What's her name? Ivana did the math. Yuana, right. Mm -hmm. Yuana did, did this class. Yep, we have a very nicely put together presentation where she did the math for us from our Seneca, which is when we have to do the tituration as well. Okay. So Tikwa, Sandra, now you can continue. Yeah, Sandra, you read here, the above. Oh, me? Mm -hmm. You? People can people understand my English? If they can understand <laughs> mine, they can understand yours. Yeah. Above is the method to be employed for the dilution and potentization of other ju uh, uh, vegetable juices. That's what we have. I have just seen. All these uh, plants fall under category one of old method which Hanuman had told. And in the bracket, he tells the same. The above is the method to be employed for dilution and potentization of other vegetable juices. All those plants should be, yes? Plants, juicy plants, guys. This is the instructions for juicy plants. Yeah. Belladonna in the small dosage just described is if the case is homeopathically adapted, capable of curing the most acute diseases in which it acts with a rapid proportionate to the nature of disorder. It is very good remedy for acute conditions, all sort of acute condition, all sort of. However, the, you, you can see this belladonna. It has very much acute characters. All types, it's not just inflammation, it's not just a pain. It can be anything, any symptom which is acute. You can see that redness, you can see that uh, uh, swelling or, or inflammatory signs. On the other hand, it is not less serviceable in most chronic ailments in which its duration of action, even the smallest dose amounts to uh, three weeks and the more means it is uh, the duration of action the belladonna works what it says Tikwa? for at least three weeks or more but he also in another point here on the very beginning of this sentence on the other hand it is not less serviceable in the most chronic ailments this is important because sanjay just talked about acutes but he's saying that it's not less serviceable. 
Now he's using a double negative. And if you're not really- Double, ne English, double, double negative means that positive. It's positive. That it's a positive. He's saying it's just as useful in chronic ailments. Mm -hmm. He's saying it's just as useful in chronic ailments in which its duration of action, even in the smallest dose, amounts to three weeks and more. That means that it has a long action. For example, China, Chinchona has an action of like one to two days. Aconite, similarly, about a day. Belladonna can continue to act much longer. So the duration of action is a multi-fold process. You know, the more the vital force needs it, the faster it'll use up the medicine and the sooner um, a redynamized redose might be necessary. Um, but he's saying that do not discard this in chronic ailments because it might be very useful. And we will be looking at the indications of belladonna as the next couple of weeks pass. Then, let's say what the footnote said. Okay, we're going to the footnote. Okay, the footnote, the, I have to take off my glasses. Best preventive of hydrophobia mm -hmm. is less smallest uh, dose of belladonna given at first uh, first every third and fourth day and repeated at every longer interval yeah so he's saying here that you know belladonna is prophylactic um, that it prevents a certain uh, number of different diseases for example scarlet fever it's well known to prevent scarlet fever or- you know, And uh, this uh, we also see in aporism 33 footnote. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. So, and he's also giving us the indications to use belladonna if somebody has been bitten by a dog that might be sick. So- What is hydrophobia? Fear of water. Fear of, fear of water, but uh, uh, commonly seen in which cases? Rabies. Yes, rabies. So Hahnemann is telling us that we can use this to prevent rabies in people who have been bitten by dogs that are suspected to carry rabies. And in another place in the chronic diseases, he says not even one in 12 of people who get bitten by rabid dogs come down with rabies themselves. So rabies, everybody's scared. Rabies, rabies shots, right? How many people go for rabies shots if they've been bitten by just any dog that's acting normal? It is entirely Everyone. common. Everyone, almost all. Entirely too common. So Hahnemann's giving us a solution here that if rabies is suspected, that you can prevent rabies with belladonna. As you can prevent strep infection with belladonna, which is important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Almost all authors have asserted that vinegar is an antidote to belladonna, but that is mere conjecture copied in simple faith by one from another, and yet nothing is further from the truth. Repeated experience has taught me that vinegar only aggravates the ill effects of large doses of belladonna. Okay, this is very important. Hahnemann regularly 
extorts us and rants that you cannot by faith pick up a book and say this is true because so and so said it oh it's in the bo ricky it must be true we can't accept this conjecture conjecture means hearsay what is the word hearsay you see things over and over and over again copied in simple faith by one from another let's just go to our facebook or our instagram we are going to see one post after another of quote unquote valuable indications or clinical tip and all this is what hahnemann considers hearsay and conjecture copied in simple faith by one from another. So you see people sharing posts, making posts from things that they've gotten from school, they've gotten from class. And sometimes these are partial truths. And as homeopaths, we actually need to be very careful to go to the source, and do the experiments ourselves when need be, but make sure that we have the proper indications and not just follow what we read that's been repeated. You know, Margaret Tyler also says the same thing. How many people are trying to outdo Hahnemann? How many people are trying to show they know more than Hahnemann? When we really need to go back to the original fountain, source of the fountain which is very, very important. And I just can't say it enough. Okay, then he tells us that vinegar only makes it worse when people are having a belladonna aggravation. But opium relieves the paralytic symptoms and abdominal pains caused by belladonna, but only in an antipathic and palliative way very probably also removes in very small doses the soper caused by belladonna that's the sleepiness the dullness and so he's saying that when people have had too much belladonna if they're having paralytic symptoms or abdominal pains or if they seem very sleepy opium can help but in the stupefied condition the mania and the fury caused by belladonna are soonest and most homeopathic, surely homeopathically removed by one or two small doses of, what is it guys? And then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have Yep. Yeah. So we're going to give Hios when there's been too strong an action that is going to result in mania and fury. Okay, there's two like polar opposites in Belladonna. We have the sluggishness and the dullness with the sleepiness, or we have the mania and the fury. So use opium you know, in, in potency, when there's an aggravation that causes abdominal pains or paralysis, but use pios when there is anger, fury, mania. Got it, guys? And he says, but well, the what is the difference uh, between this paragraph? Have you observed? First paragraph is talking about depressed state. And uh, second paragraph is talking about hyper state. When symptoms seems to be depressed, like uh, that time uh, opium is suggested. And when you see a hyper state, mania, fury, 
that time he is suggesting hyos yep very very important but the intoxication by itself is best subdued by wine as i have seen and has trages and moribenus long ago observed so wine mm -hmm. can also be used then we get more interesting again when a small dose of belladonna unhomeopathically selected causes lachrymose disposition with chilliness and headache an equally small dose of pulsatilla relieves this state so we see often in the proving data that when things have gone wrong we have to look at the symptoms of how it's gone wrong when we choose a quote unquote modifier or antidote sometimes we really can't get rid of the effect that the medicine has had on the vital force but we can help it to correct itself so lacrimose means what's lacrimation anybody know what lacrimation means discharge from eyes right lacrimose then if we add the word disposition what are people doing when they have discharge from their eyes in a disposition they're crying okay guys so when somebody after they've had belladonna it's not really the right medicine it's not working out well and they're crying a lot lacrimose lacrimation is tears so a lacrimose disposition is weeping you've got a crying person who is chilly has a headache you will use pulsatilla okay so we have like four different things here of how to fix the problem if you've given the wrong medicine lots of times if we've given the wrong medicine if we just wait a little longer it'll be okay or we proceed with the other me uh, next medicine it'll be okay but sometimes we resort to these as well so it's very very helpful to know this okay now we're moving to something different but suitable help is most urgently required in cases where belladonna has been swallowed in considerable quantities, for example, in the form of its berries. In such cases, relief is obtained by drinking a large quantity of strong coffee, which removes the loss of irritability and the tetanic convulsions, though it only does that antipathically. It also promotes the vomiting of the berries, most certainly, the fosses being at once. Same time irritated with a long feather in order to empty the stomach. Nowadays, with modern medicine, we can call poison control and get assistance at the hospital if somebody eats belladonna berries. Back in Hahnemann's time, there was no poison control number to call. There were no tarim centers, no hospitals, and no stomach pumps or anything like that that could help in this situation. So Hahnemann suggests giving people a hell of a lot of coffee and then tickling the back of their throat to make them vomit. Okay, nowadays we might be better off using the hospital. Okay, Sanjay, you read. Erysophilitis swelling caused by belladonna readily removed by hypersulf. Camphor 
to display sorry hypersol cam camphor 2 displays much antidotal power against some of the morbid symptoms caused by belladonna here he is given every relation how the belladonna symptom can be managed prophylactic power of belladonna given in small doses every 6 or 7 day discover by me against erysipelad smooth scarlet fever we also also mentioned in aporism 33 footnote as described by syndem planches is that right word to pronounce good enough i don't can't read it any better and other with uh, calumin how to pronounce that word illuminated calluminated and ridicule for 19 years by large number of medical men who were not acquainted in with this peculiar form of children's disease and subsequently mistook mistake for it the red miliary red miliary purpura miliaries uh food worm root worms is talking about scarlet fever during the epidemic time to which he has used belladonna as a prophylactic do you remember what what were the lines he explained while he was telling this experience that time when there was a first wave of epidemics in scarlet fever he uh, selected from the symptom belladonna as curative remedy as a genus epidemis huh? and then what he says in second uh, wave in second wave he say say told everyone was affected those who was not affected in the first wave also were infected in the second wave but those who got the dose of belladonna in first attack did not had infection in the second this is the experience he explains in uh, aporism number uh, 33 um red miliary that came from belgium in 1801 1801 and uh, this they falsely call scarlet fever oh yes. means uh, red miliary is something different and uh, scarlet fever is something different and naturally they fail to get any result from administration of my prophylactic and curative remedy for true scarlet fever in this red in this red miliary fever what he tells here uh, maybe some criticism was done by some people oh, for this 19 years he was ridiculed for mm. 19 years they made fun of him and ridiculed him and uh, for the some uh, postular disease some red miliary purpura disease and he tell that was came from belgium in 18 01 and he tells that this was mistaken as scarlet fever 
and so there was a failure and he said that belladonna is a perfect remedy works uh, curative and preventive in scarlet fever oh where is ha i am happy to say that of later year late years other medical men have again observed the old true scarlet fever they have implied testified to the prophylactic power of belladonna in this disease in this disease and have at last render me a justice after having been treated so long with unmerit contempt what is unmerit contempt ठीक हुआ unmerited contempt means so when you have contempt for somebody you have a disdain you have a disgust um you're like upset with them you're like Psh, can you believe that person they do this can you believe hanuman said that Psh, that was terrible so you had for 19 years you had other doctors saying epic fail absolute fail that was terrible look at what hanuman did and they talked bad about him and so then when people realized the mistake they rendered him justice after having treated him with unmerited what are merits merits are good things you do so benefits you so unmerited he did not deserve it he's saying that he did not deserve this contempt because of the mistake made between the miliary eruption and true scarlet fever which is a streptococcal infection streptococcal infections can be very problematic you know even nowadays with antibiotics they can still be very problematic some of them are very difficult to cure some of them move into rheumatic fever some of them turn into um kind of like a chronic uh called oh gosh what's that called it's not that uncommon um is this chronic disease that some children get even after they've had antibiotics where it's their moods changed and various foods and environments trigger it and they just it's uh i can't remember what this is called um autism no no it's um much more it's different than autism cheese devera had a case of this not long ago is she still with us today i'm here what, i think which case did i have um you know when people get strep children oh you... yes yes pandas i had two yes yes <laughs> two cases it's so hard to think of what it was pandas yes yes comes from i never heard of that in the past oh it's a thing it happens mhm mm yeah it's, it's unbelievable yeah. yeah yeah and then those poor read this they're put into like special special schools and they have to have their diets arranged so carefully it's just really terrible and that's just because they've had a strep infection that didn't cure properly so yeah but you did a great job with that case devera well we're still working on both of them um well one of them in particular one i'm still working on but um yeah it's coming along one of them is a very interesting case um i actually gave the boy uh hyos because um the way he's behaving a lot of um uh, inappropriate sexual um um you know words that come out of his mouth things that he does um and sometimes he could be very explosive and angry very interesting case and he has oh he also has twitching twitches um 
um, and um, he curses also, like almost like a Tourette syndrome. Mm -hmm. Ticks, ticks he has. Yeah, so pandas is something that's really interesting that can happen with the strep infection. Yeah, but I hope, um, listen, it's still like, he's still being treated this one boy. Hopefully he'll be fine. And another one was just always very angry and abused his little sister. And then he would decide where he wants, where everyone should sit at the kitchen table, which music everyone should play in the car. That was interesting. You know, you know about that one. You helped us with that one. That's the one that he got like a podium. Mm -hmm. Yep, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, so when you have these strange presentations that a lot of people send out to the psychiatrist, you know, the psychiatrist, you know, we have to be looking at mental health issues in a much broader way than we are taught, you know, in the allopathic school, that there's so much, it's, everything's connected. You know, I was talking with a patient last week um, you know, she was surprised that, you know, her stomach problem had gotten better, you know, after the medicine that I'd given her. And then she said, I wonder if it's connected to symptom X that she also has. I said, it's all connected. You know, we're not putting people into little bits and pieces as specialists. We're looking at the whole person, mind, body, soul. It's all one thing. And wherever there's a problem, we have to put it all together like a puzzle. So we just, we can't just look at one aspect. Because, uh, you know, homeopathy is best practiced as a holistic method of treatment. Okay, so he had finally had justice after having been treated with contempt that he did not deserve. Then he goes to say about the rude vonk is a different disease, a red miliary eruption. Belladonna doesn't suit for it. And that it could be cured with aconite and tincture of raw coffee the former for the heat and increasing restlessness and agonizing anxiety, the latter for the excessive gains and the lachrymose humor. So lachrymose humor would be like making jokes that and crying at the same time. The aconite should be given in the resilient whole dilution. Remember that's the, X with the little mark here, both in the smallest portion of a drop for a dose, and that's even a large dose in Hanumanian terms, the one or the other, according as they are indicated, given every 12, 16, or 24 hours. Here is talking about alternation possibly. In recent times, these two very different diseases, smooth scarlet fever and purple miliary seem to have occurred complicated with one another in some epidemics. Hence, in some of the patients, belladonna and others aconite seem to have been most useful. So then he goes, you know, he tells us how to handle this red miliary eruption. And these are the provers. We have Bear, Gross, Hartman, Hartung, Temple, Harriman, Hornberg, Coomer, Langhammer. Whoops. We had to stop reading because we lost our list of provers. Mm -hmm. Langhammer, J.G. Lehrman, Muckle, Ellie Rukert, Staff, and Wislinius. 
And then there's the old school authorities. Sanjay, you tell us what the old school authorities means. <laughs> Old school, probably he's talking about uh, allopaths. If homeopathy is the new school, then allopathy is the old school in Hanumanian terms. And there's a very uh, long list of the use of Belladonna because- Because that time, that time Hanuman was uh, just working on homeopathy. And accordingly, homeopathy was a new uh, therapeutic method, he, which he was about to introduce. And he, when he talks about old school, he talks about the allopathy. And so there's a long list. And these are going to be the things in brackets, not the things in parentheses, but the things in brackets. Here is a set of, you know, I should bring a pen, brackets. So anything that's in our proving data that has this around it means that it's a reference to a journal entry. Okay, and so you see that long list that we just scrolled through here, here from 1422, third edition, 1440, right? 1113, 1811, we've got there, 1787, we've got old medical texts that are going to be referenced in the proving data that he studied from as well. And he went in the fragmenta, there was 405 symptoms of belladonna. In fragmenta, this was, means uh, these all data was collected from all these people. And the provings that he did himself. Yeah, many... afterwards, afterwards he proved everything. And he gets more and more and more symptoms, the more provers and the more provings they do. Yeah, and now we have here, but I think we should stop and begin to this to totality in the next section. Yep, because see, we have proving symptom one, proving symptom two coming up next time. Join us next time. Okay. So that's that. I think that. Uh, by looking at the faces, they didn't had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Proving data is so much fun, especially when Hahnemann rants and when he gives us information about how to backtrack a case going wrong. It is wonderful information. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope that whoever's watched this and whoever shares this will benefit from it. Let's see, we have a chat here. Devera saying thank you. Thank you, Devera. Thank you, Divera. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay, so when are we on schedule for our next event? Does anybody remember? Uh, Aphorism 17. You're a smart one. And what day? Uh, on Thursday. Yes. You got it. Okay, so God willing, we will be joining you on Thursday to continue with Organon. There are going to be a little slight complication with next Sunday's session. 
next Sunday is a very serious day in our Jewish calendar. And it's a very heavy day. Um, and it's a fast. And when Jewish people fast, we go without food and without any water at all. You know, for like, this is a, like a 26 hour fast. So I'm requesting that we do next Sunday's uh, Materia Medica Pura a little earlier in the day because this is just about sunset and I'm going to be wanting to drink water and eat food this time next week. Um, we can so, uh, continue two to three hours earlier. Yeah, that would help me out a lot. I'll probably even need help doing more reading than usual. Because I might not. As it, it is Sunday, so it's uh, it's uh, no problem to have session at 5 o'clock Indian time. Okay, great. So I'll come up with what time to do that because it's just not going to work. 2 o'clock. Uh, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the afternoon for you. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so minor schedule change next week due to Tisha B'Av, called Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. This is the month of Av, that is the ninth day of the month of Av. So and guys, just uh, keep in mind, next Sunday, we will have uh, this Materia Medica class not at 9.30 Indian time, but uh, it will be on uh, five o'clock or uh, six o'clock in the evening, right? Okay. Three hours earlier, that will do, Tikwa? Well, provided that I'm doing okay, we should be able to do that. It's really a hard fast. It really is. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of like- So three, three hours earlier, yeah, but if I feel like crap, I'm really going to need help reading. Just know that. I don't want to cancel. Yeah, we have, we have, we have two, three people who can read. Uh -huh. Okay, just want to put that out there that we have a major event coming up on our Jewish calendar next week. And this is actually a very special nine day period after the new moon up until this date and the day following it. Anyway, that digresses. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And anybody who watches this, thank you for watching it. And take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night, sir. Good night, ma'am. Thank Good you night, so much. Good night, Bye, ma'am. Good night. Good night, sir. Bye, ma'am. I just need to save my recording.